Hey everybody, this is the Sliders Review. And since it's Women's History Month, I'm here today to talk to you about VR Trooper Season 1 Episode, Caitlin's Front Page. I'm not sure what the number of the episode is, but it's somewhere in like the middle. So, VR Troopers. I haven't really talked about that much. I talked about it last month when about JD. And so, like, whenever I rewatch both season one and two, when I get my bearings and everything, I'll talk about it more because it was one of those unique and really good series that came from Saban, you know, from Metal Hero and everything. It was the equivalent of that of Power Rangers, and it actually started to spike in ratings more than that of Power Rangers. And so I did watch part of the, a good chunk of the first season years ago on Netflix, but then when I got rid of Netflix, I stopped and then they took it off Netflix, I think. And so you can find it like on YouTube, thank God for that. And I believe it was on DVD, but it might be out of print now. And so VR Troopers was very unique. It showcased three heroes, two guys, one girl, and but sadly the female of the group never really got a time to shine as a hero why because they based it mainly off the uh toku's um um series and stuff and the female there really didn't do much basically she was relegated to fighting foot soldiers and would still get her butt kicked by the foot soldiers I've never seen her destroy an actual monster alien type person. It mostly is just for like the guys to do and stuff. And cause this was a split between two completely different shows, actually three when you get into the, like, the second season and stuff. And so that always sucked in my opinion that like the female, the only female of the show and like the hero and stuff never really got a chance to whoop butt unless she was in the battle grid simulator which is why i picked this episode but even when she's in the battle grid simulator and she's kicking butt she ends up getting her butt kicked and so like um how was i going in this <laughs> and so there were actually three solo caitlin episodes in the first season but i decided to pick this one because this for the most part even though she never gets to destroy a monster at least she gets to whoop some butt in battle grit but still she is the damsel in distress sadly the metal hero series was created around the 80s i believe and this show came out in the 90s and they decided to say screw women empowerment but i still wanted to high um, highlight the actress and the character because you know she was a female superhero and so like it just sucks that they didn't do more with the character when she was suited up but they did some decent stuff for her when she was in her civilian form caitlin star i believe her name was is the only 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 female of this show they had four other ladies but they were mostly just hench women who were like you know be in business suit attire and just stand there to look pretty and probably say like one thing once in a blue moon and that was about it and so I, I don't know if in the second season they brought in a female henchwoman or not. It's either that or Mass Rider I'm getting confused with. Because when they ran out of footage, they had to go to another, like, you know, Metal Hero series. Which, Grimlore, seriously, like... They didn't have to like change his face appearance in the second season because the dude just does the same crap he always does in season one. He sits in the chair, he talks, he points his finger, he looks at the screen, and then he talks some more. They could just keep reusing the same crap because kids didn't care back then. <laughs> but Caitlyn was played by i think her name is sarah joy brown and this was actually her first acting gig and so like she was really cool in it but sometimes she would talk really loud <laughs> i've noticed but you know when you're like you know it's your first time acting you know it happens and she's been acting ever since she's done a number of shows movies soap opera stuff like that she's very social on social media on both twitter and instagram check her out 
and just sad and well sadly just like with power ranger people she has her own horror stories of like the saban era and stuff like that of working with saban but mostly that uh what's his name shooky levy or something like that um but her horror story is way worse than anybody else from power rangers so I'm not even gonna get into that just go look it on google but yeah she's been through it and everything and so like i don't know if she keeps in touch with her co-stars you know you never get to hear no stories really from vr troopers because they don't really do conventions that i know of and stuff and i've never really seen them in interview now she did an interview one time but then she deleted it but mostly that was just to talk about like, you know, Sh Shooky and like Saban and stuff like that. But she deleted that one. She did one time go on a tyrant years ago on Twitter about um, them. But I don't know if that's still there or not. Because when it comes to VR Troopers, I really want to learn more about like, you know, this series and stuff. Because it was like one of the same thing with like Mystic Knights and uh, Mass Rider and stuff like that. But people have forgotten about these folks, which is quite a shame. Now, she did show up in Zeo when she played Tommy's love interest after he got dumped by Kimberly. And it was that skiing episode. And so, like, her and some of the voice, well, a lot of the voice cast is from Power Rangers. But her and, let's see, Brad and the dude who plays the sensei, they all guest starred on Power Rangers um, at some point in time. Her and Brad guest starred on Zeo. The dude who plays JD, like, they didn't have him for some bizarre reason. I don't know why. Or Professor Hart. Hmm, I wonder why. What did those two get in common? <laughs> oh, the 90s. And so, like, in this episode... Caitlyn gets like a scoop from like a mysterious man in a trench coat talking about this um, facility makes like some type of like weapons of mass destruction, chemical weapons and stuff like that. And so he will not tell her his name. And she's a investigative reporter and a news journalist. Her boss Woody gets on my nerves. For the most part, there's no humor in this show and thank God for that. Because we all know with Saban stuff, he can go crazy with that slapstick. So the only crazy character, surprisingly, is not Jeb the talking dog. It's actually Woody, her boss. And that dude got on my nerves and stuff like that. And so she's going to go up on his lead. And so it turns out the mysterious dude is a, is a Skug, I think their name is. And Skug is the foot soldier. They have black outfits, a cape, and a gold helmet with a big smiley face on their face. <laughs> and so he's working for the bad dude. Now the bad dude is in his human form, works for like this big company. And he's really this like monstery alien looking thing named Grimlord who lives in virtual reality. Virtual reality was weird. It was always, it was, it was, a, it was a natural reality, like a, a universe, but it was always in like, you know, a quarry in it. <laughs> and so like, um, what is it? So like he would transform and he would always transform in the most coolest way. He'll put his hand on the globe. It would turn all dark. You hear some like cool noises. And I forgot the phrase, um, Forces of darkness empower me. Take me back to my virtual reality. I love that phrase. <laughs> Who wouldn't love saying that like every day? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And so like, but one problem with this show was the dialogue. Sometimes the dialogue would be so dumb. It was like, dude, you literally ask the question and you literally see everything around you. Therefore, you don't even have to ask that question. You can just look. Um, I can't give an example right now. Um, but like, it would just have sometimes the weirdest dialogue and it's just like, people need to check that crap. And so like, you know, she'll go like and investigate and stuff like that. And, um, so she's seen that, you know, there's some funny stuff going around and there's some skugs. Then all of a sudden 
Grimlord, for whatever reason, wanted to shift into the battle grid <laughs> and everything. That never made no sense. But it's like, hey, whatever. We get some fight scenes and everything. You get civilian fights, you get the battle force grid fight, and then you get the actual center. Not, well, not center, but you know what I mean. The actual fight fight. And so this alerts Professor Hart. Professor Hart is just a man inside a computer living in virtual reality. It's never really explained too much about him and stuff. And so, for whatever reason, he doesn't contact the guys. He only contacts Caitlyn. And so, she shifts into the battle grid force thing. The battle grid thing was weird. Okay, so their VR trooper suits were like metal. So, think of like Iron Man, right? And so, of course, in the Japanese footage, it's like shiny plastic looking stuff that actually looks metal. In the American one, it's just dull looking paint plastic. <laughs> So you can totally tell the difference and it's more brightly colored and it's no shine whatsoever but the grid battle force thing was weird they will wear these spandex outfits similar to power rangers be painted completely different in their vr trooper costumes and the helmet was recycled helmets from the red mighty Morphin power rangers <laughs> <laughs> and they'll just be repainted and stuff <laughs> and so they will be like in this weird alternate dimension that looked almost organic like an organic cave and everything and they'll be just fighting scugs and, <laughs> and everything now this is where she's whooping a whole lot of hiney and everything and she's like really doing it so then the guys they go to her newspaper place and they realize hey she ain't there so where is she well, by this time, she's been captured, tied up with rope, and is next to, like, a uh, oral drum and everything with a bomb detonator attached to it. And it's just like, when did she get her butt kicked? <laughs> and everything, we didn't even see it, because she was kicking butt and stuff. And so, like, the guys, they go back to their headquarters, which is just, like, this triangular arc in, like, the desert, which was really cool. They'll be in this mechanical room and everything. Jeb is doing his stupid rap. Uh, whatever. He's a talking dog. That just tells you there right there. <laughs> so, anyway... They're trying to like, you know, figure out what's going on and they get like a reading on like the chemical plant and then they go out there looking and they find like, um, I don't know, they find her barrette or that Betsy from the other episode. I don't know. But anyway, they had to go back and they had to like track her um, whereabouts and oh, okay, yeah, they track her whereabouts and then they find her at the chemical place tied up. So they transform and I love the transform sequence. It's like really cool. They're morphers, if you will. Well, virtualize it or whatever you call them or like necklaces pendants and everything and they'll be like we are vr and then they'll like transform and like all that cool stuff you know and so like while there this is what's really interesting both these two metal hero dudes come from two completely different series that never interacted but they were always filming in a way you think they were connected and it blew my mind when i found that out so they both had to fight like you know they're um, monster dude, robot dudes, and they're just kicking butt left and right. Um, JB, I think, uses his laser lance command, which is always great. And then uh, Ryan uses like his laser fist, which you really don't get to see in the series that much. You know what's always weird? Like I said last month, JB or JD or whatever his name is was the actual real true hero of the show but they kept making it to where Ryan would be the center focal point of the show and everything because everything revolved around Ryan his missing father making him seem like he's you know blonde like blonde hair blue eyes hero dude you know what I'm saying and JD couldn't get no time to shine but JD was the one always whooping butt in so many episodes and he always whooped it a whole lot better and but Ryan's suit was cooler looking and stuff but J but JD in my opinion was the real hero of the show so after they whoop on both those guys they rescue Caitlyn she's like yo a bomb so they run off and then boom it's like a huge explosion and everything and then so she comes back and towards the end it turns out her article she wrote made the front page paper and but this don't make no sense she uncovered, like, the, the government actually uncovered this secret. They didn't know they were building weapons there. 
But this one don't make no sense. The bad guy is the one who led her <laughs> to this facility. So he ratted himself out. Do you see what I'm saying with the writing don't make no sense? So then her boss is all like, oh, since you did so great on this paper, now you get to cover a spelling bee contest. And so she's all like, why? She wants to do more investigative journalism. And so that really undermines her potential as like a journalist and everything. Like she's really good, but he wants to like put her down on the peg because she's a woman and everything. So he changes his mind and he's going to allow her to do more like, you know, investigative type stuff, which he should, which is why I can't stand this character to that in the humor but for the most part she was always a cool character and since she was the only female you know you, you always latched on to her and she's gorgeous she still looks the same till this day she has not changed whatsoever like she must have like a fountain of youth like formula or something like that <laughs> but this was always a cool show to watch and it was a bit like the fight seems a bit more grittier than power rangers it just felt darker and grittier and stuff so if you ever have a chance to check it out you should totally check it out happy women's history month everybody all right i'll talk to you later bye